What is going on in this episode of OG55? I got Tones Poppy, I got Cannon Camper, Michael Ebba, and the Italiano. Today we're talking about Das Pass, the changes. It's been the talk of Diz Twitter. We're talking about Marcus's recent Disneyland trip after a little while. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Disney's upcoming movie slate all the way up to like the 2030s. <laughs> Crazy stuff. And 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 we're talking disney gaming disney is ramping it up in terms of the gaming we're gonna break all that down up next on og 5055 Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. We have a stacked show for you today. I'm going to introduce my fantastic pa panel, and we're going to dive right in. Right over here, we got, you know, George, the Italiano, the Joe Pesci of, of Diz YouTube. Uh, George, if you could let everybody home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There he is. There he is. And right below us, we got Mr. Tones Poppy, uh, Bad Thoughts Studio, Bad Thoughts Podcast, in the house. Tones, welcome back, sir. Always glad to be back, man. I love, I love chopping it up with you guys. Love chopping. Uh, today we're talking about gaming, so I, I love this portion of the, uh, the the part we're talking about. But yeah, if you guys want to follow me on social media, Tones underscore TV on all platforms, and also follow the podcast, the Candy Camper, and I do Bad Thoughts Podcast on YouTube and Spotify. And if you guys are interested in movie content and TV shows, Game of Thrones stuff, Bad Thoughts Studios on YouTube, we do a bunch of content on that as well. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, especially if you're into Game of Thrones. We got some Game of Thrones news actually today, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We might have to. I don't know. Did you already record a video on that one? No, no, not yet. I, I was. I am currently not at my usual setup, as you guys could tell, my background. But but we are going to be doing a video, and I will send you a DM soon. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and down below, we got the one, the only, Mister Candid Camper. Candid, welcome back, man. Hey, how are you? Doing good, dude. You're looking good. You know, you feeling good. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing cool, all right. Cool. Yeah, we're, we're here. We're here. You know how it is. <laughs> we're, we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, yeah, but in general, if you want to know how I'm really doing, you guys, you guys can all find me at where are we at now, Tones. We're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we're everywhere. <laughs> we're on the YouTubes. We're on the X. We're on the the one the Instagrams. Candy Camper, there, there. You can find me. Uh, extra R at the end of this one if you find an Instagram. There we go. There we go. And then right over there, kitty corner, we got our friendly neighborhood OG55 Spider Man. <laughs> if if Eva has to bounce, uh, you know, you know, periodically through the show, he's just got to go save the city. You know, the police scanner is is going crazy. Spider Man, <laughs> welcome back, dude. <laughs> OG, thank you so much. You know, by the way, before the show, I was actually swinging through the city, and then I heard the call from the Orange Grove. I, I so I had to come by and see what's popping. So here I am. Yeah, so, man. You, 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 had a, you had a swing by Grove Manor, huh? Exactly, right? <laughs> if you could let everybody at home know where they could find you on social media, Ebba. Yes, absolutely. You can find me on Instagram, Michael Ebba. You can also find me on Twitter uh, or X, whichever one you want to call it, at Michael Ebba 1991. And then you can also find me here on OG55. There we go. There we go. All right, let's dive into our topics at hand. First, Marcus, I'm gonna start with you, man. Let's because I think that I think your your Disneyland experience recently might even tie into the Das Pass stuff that we're seeing. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. But how like you after your trip, and it's been a little while since since you went. I think you said it was like before the pandy. You said on yeah. Twitter, I have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 happened, brother? I, are they are they all good thoughts or are, are they, they bad they, thoughts? Are they bad <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> so, um, the funny part about that is I, I was riding you like in real time in the park. Like I had thoughts during that time. Um, yeah, but I've been to Disneyland since since before the pandemic. I think 2019, um, October. And you know, I recently went to Disney World in May and had a fantastic time. Probably one of the best times I had in the park ever um at, in may in disney world 
and uh, coming back now, you know, going with the family to Disneyland for the first time, it, there there was no magic, man. Magic's been it was gone. I didn't feel it. What and, what ha- what happened? Was it like the was it like the operational stuff, or was it just the vibe? I, why why it was, was it? It was everything. So the only the good Disney vibe I got, you know, you still get that when you walk in the gates and you walk down Main Street. Main Street doesn't change for me. I always get that. And you're like, oh, this is amazing. I'm finally here again. And you see the castle and you're like, yes. okay, cool. It's when you start branching off into the other directions and you're trying to make it through the crowd of people that are there on a weekday um, in the middle of the of a of a rainstorm. And you still are, you know, still tight with everybody. It's crazy. Um the rides are just the lines are long. The cast members didn't seem like they wanted to be there. Uh, also just everyone's kind of just doing their thing. Like no one had, no one had any sense of urgency, like any of the cast members. And it just felt like they were just there to work. Um, I, you didn't, you didn't have any of that old school, like, let me help you. Let me give you that magical trip where I felt like I had that in Disney world last time I went in May. And I'm glad you brought that up. Cause when we do get into the, the DAS conversation, that actually has a lot to do with some of the changes because a lot of that has to be implemented with the cast members themselves. Um, so that's, that's quite interesting that you, you bring that up. Was it more of a, um, uh, so, so you say like the cast member just kind of had like that, that feeling that they're just there for to work, get their paycheck, their shifts mm-hmm. over. They end up leaving sort of thing. Yeah. It, it didn't less have like smiles. that extra mile. Yeah. Less smiles, less, uh, Oh, here, go. Let me help you do this. Let me, it was more of like a point. Oh, you just need to go over there and do it there. Or, oh, uh, yeah, they'll help. They'll help mm. you over on that side. Mm. It wasn't like, sure. No problem. Let me help you. Let me walk around, which don't get me wrong. I don't, I, I, we, you guys know you hold Disney to a, a different standard. A, you're paying a shitload of money to get in there. B, it's Disney. Everything was supposed to be that magic. You're paying 600 bucks. Everybody's treated equally. Like it just wasn't that. And um, it sucked having to, you know, not going for so long. And did just... you, did you purchase Genie Plus? I did not. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it wouldn't have worked out for my situation um, with, how, you know, with all the kids and my wife. So, it, it just pointless. So it was easier just to do rider swap. Yeah, now the interesting thing, Mark, is that you say about the cast members. Um, and no disrespect to cast members. There, there are still some no, good no. ones out there, absolutely. But but here's the thing. I noticed that too. Since the since they since Disneyland reopened since the pandemic. And I think a big a big thing that changed was I think that because there was like that labor shortage for a while, I think they were kind of not being as picky. With- Bottom barrel, no offense. Right, no offense, but they were just not being as picky as they used to be. And I've noticed that really since I came back, it's gotten better than it was like right when they opened. Mm-hmm. But like you're right, it was like a lot of like just like the kind of people, like the kind of workers you see, like if you go to like Costco or like Walmart or something, like they're there to do their job and go through the motions. You know, I mean, they'll get the job done for sure, but it's yeah. just not that extra mile. And th- there are gems in there. Like we had George and I had Oscar from the uh, yes. Uh, Oh, what, what was that? Uh, Cafe Cafe Orleans. Cafe Orleans. I always forget about. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Oscar was amazing. We, we, there's some good, very good cast members. Still, Jackie, uh, our our awesome tour guide. Our tour guide, who was actually Jackie, was probably the best cast member I've ever encountered. No joke, she's incredible. But like, that's the thing, though. Like, but there are good ones. But there are a lot of like just people that are there just to clock in and out, collect that mm-hmm. paycheck, and you can kind of tell. So I understand what you're saying, Candid, and it really did and. Now I'm kind of used to it, I think, because I, yeah. I go like once a month. But for you, not going for a long time and coming back to it, it was probably like a big shock. And, yeah, and, and if, I'm not trying to overanalyze things. Sorry, George, go ahead. No, 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 really quick. I just wanted to say, and for me coming, you know, on both sides of the spectrum, because I go to Disneyland and Walt Disney World, and you had mentioned that when you went down in May, you know, you had a phenomenal time. And I actually had this conversation with uh, with Mike on, on the phone that we were talking about, like, just with Disney World and what have you. And... I, I don't know how the conversation came up, but I said, to be honest, I said, for me, I get a lot of more positive, better responses to cast members at Walt Disney World than I have been at Disneyland lately. Unfortunately, as I said, Oscar, Jackie, phenomenal, but just like the overall scope of collectively with with the cast members, I, I get more 
of that magic sense with majority of the cast members at Walt Disney World than I do at Disneyland. Yeah, and and there was you know don't get me wrong, it was it was still a really good trip. It was fun. Um, it was raining off and on, and you know it got to about five o'clock. The park closed at ten. We brought the kids back and got them all showered up in bed. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna check off a bucket list thing I never done before. I threw on a freaking poncho, threw on some fresh pair of shoes and clothes. And I uh, grabbed the umbrella and I went back to the park by myself. And I shit you not, I probably rode like 10 rides just fucking jammed on all of them, dude. And it was awesome. So it redeemed itself. It was good. <laughs> that was that redemption arc, right? You know, it was. It was. So that was your first, you said bucket list. So that was your first time kind of going solo? Yeah, my first time solo in the park and in the rain, which is like another big plus for me at night too, which is awesome. You know, going solo, man. I mean, obviously you love going with friends. You love going with family. But solo hits different though, too. Oh, it does. Yeah, dude, my own, especially the way my brain works and how I set up <laughs> my stuff. Oh, it was great. And it was, I shit you not, I probably walked like 20 miles within four hours and I was just back and forth on everything. Um, another big thing I wanted to say before we move on, the updates that they did to like Indiana Jones, that was probably the best ride I've had in a long time. Yes. It was very good, very smooth. I don't know if they changed anything on the cars or not, but. It, it was a really good ride. I got off there and I think I'd sent Tony a, um, a message to somebody. I'm like, dude, this was fucking awesome. Yeah, it was me. I remember. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah they, 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 they really renovated the hell out of that thing. From what I understand, they took, they, they took all the skulls off and they painted them all individually and they put them back. Like I heard they really got in there and just cleaned everything up, dude. And the new projections, what used to be the rat room look amazing. Yeah, really good. So um, pretty cool. One thing that <laughs> I just want to tell everybody out there, do not go up in that Swiss family tree house during the rain. That motherfucker is sketchy. Oh, what <laughs> oh, happened? Man. What happened? You I, I didn't realize, dude, it goes way, is it way higher now, right? I yeah. swear there's like an extra piece or something and you're coming down and the, the, it's just slippery, dude. So I'm all walking sideways and I'm holding like one kid trying to oh my God. The, the handrails are all wet. So I'm like, this is sketchy, dude. Oh, so yeah, man. Don't, don't do that in the rain. It, it's not higher, but it does feel higher. And the reason being is because we used to have like the, the bridge with the other tree, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that other tree sort of made the main tree like feel smaller. But um, yeah, now it feels like it does feel taller, though, you know, because it's, yeah. it's more open and stuff. But must have been taking those blue pills. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It was exactly. good though. They did a good job on it. I, I liked it a lot. It was it was cool. That's just if you're walking all day, man, and you have to get up there, you do that right in the morning if you if you want to do it. Yeah, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. You know, you don't want to slip and fall. I had my share of of of, of that kind of thing <laughs> over yeah. in Florida, and it's not a, it's not a fun situation at all. You know, when you when you fall like that, and up in you that recover. treehouse. I recovered. I'm cool. You know, I'm cool. But like, you know, up in that treehouse though, you slip and fall, man. It's like, you know, four <laughs> flights down, you know, and you're taking other people out with you. Yeah. yeah you're hitting every branch on the way, you know, <laughs> oh, it's, man. it's, it's crazy. So before I move on to this DAS thing that, that dropped today, like any, any other final thoughts on your, on your trip, uh, Marcus? Yeah. Besides, you know, besides not having the best of time with cast members, it was still good. The park was clean. Um, the lines were pretty smooth. Uh, the the one thing was the 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 fast passes because that's that's all changed since I've gone. Yeah. Um, and having Indian not Indian Jones having um pirates like loop around up on the bridge, loop back around all the way to Haunted Mansion. You can't get across over to the restaurants. Not only that, you put a popular restaurant right there instead of putting it in another location and you're having it blocked off for the people that are paying good money to sit in those outside seats to see out in new orleans square it, it makes zero sense to me and there's there's just a lot of different um approaches that i think they could have could have taken things and a lot of different ways that i feel disney could make money in that park and they're just not taking opportunities yeah, no, well said, well said. Yeah, they, they definitely need to they definitely need to look at the Genie Plus stuff. It's it is a mess. It is a mess. They uh, they probably should do what Universal does and just raise that price up. Like just boost it up to like $200 or something and make it an actual VIP experience so you have less people in the system. Well, and yeah. also too of what we were going to talk about, I think also Genie Plus has a major impact of uh the DAS system also as well. 
Well, that's hey, that's why you're the Segway King, George. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> look at look at this transition king, bro. <laughs> Here we go. Speaking of speaking of that, this drop today. Disney overhauls DAS, which is a special assistance pass, to reduce abuse and misuse. And this is from Disney Tours blog. Uh, let me go here. It says here, okay, so Disney is working with health professionals. So they're outsourcing this now, okay? This was this was in-house before, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, George? It was in-house before, now correct. it's third party. Correct. Okay. So they're working with health professionals to help better assist guests in accessing attraction queues, among other things. To accomplish this, Disney World and Disneyland will be taking several steps over the course of the coming months. In theory, at least, these should minimize issues and allay anxieties about the uncertainties that accompany any sweeping systematic changes at Disney World and Disneyland. Now, here's the thing. Before I, I, I draw, I, I, I bring it to you, George. I want It says here the parks will be adding more cast members and investing in specialized mm -hmm. training to assist uh -huh. guests. Yes. That's interesting. In order to better identify and understand the best tools and options based on their unique needs, the parks will be adding more options for guests needing assistance with lines, including a, a defined, quote, return to queue end quote process for guests who need to exit the standby line and re-enter. So it's kind of interesting because it says here also that Disney World and Disneyland are partnering with in Inspire Health Alliance's trained med medical professionals to assist cast members as needed in determining elig determining eligibility. That's interesting. Uh, for appropriate accommodations and ensuring that these accommodations are provided only for the guests for whom they intended, who are they intended and not misused. Okay, I know for I, I honestly this DAS has been abused. It's oh, been yeah. abused. Oh, I yeah. know I don't know about Disney World, but out here in California, absolutely abused, and probably even more so since now you got to pay for Fast Pass, so to speak. Right? Can but you George, give me an example of that real quick, OG, of them abusing it? Like, okay, um, so go ahead, George. So, or, if you don't mind, George, if you don't no, mind, no, OG. No, um, no, no, go ahead. So. What what happens is right now they I believe that they said over the past five years, um, DAS that the people in the line as far as like for the Lightning Lane or the Genie Plus has gone up about I, I think it was like sixty percent sixty percent of the people that are actually in the Genie Plus line or the Lightning Lane are DAS Pass holders, so to speak. So essentially, what it is is you go to um, guest relations and you speak to a cast member and you know whatever your situation may be um that you describe to them if they feel like that you are eligible to get das um they will link it to your disney account whether it's through disneyland or walt disney world and um it's no secret i myself use das um and um yeah, yeah mr uh michael ebba uses it as well um and for me i don't have a problem if they need to change the logis logistics of like what they need to accommodate for me um because even though that i'm telling the truth when i go to a cast member there are a lot of people that when we say abuse the system they are using falsified illnesses or ailments to get the DAS and because of the, the HIPAA laws, cast members are not allowed on their own pretense to like dive into that. Dive into ask that. For, correct. Ask for proof. Stuff like but, that. but do it do they have to this is this isn't a California or Florida rule. This is Disney being accommodating, right? Correct. Correct. This is as, Disney, as yeah. As long as things are ADA compliant, that's kind of the only rule that they have to follow, correct? Right. And I think and I think Disney is kind of seeing the uh, the, the data. And I think that's how they are able to say 60 percent of the people that when they scan in their return time for Lightning Lane, it'll put it in their computer system, whether or not it's a DAS return or if it's actually a paid return with Genie Plus or Lightning Lane. And that's how they are able to come up that 60 percent wow. more than half of the people in the lightning lane or the genie plus return are our das holders and as i said for me i say disney definitely has to work this out even though that i have used das before in the past i have no problems with providing any kind of information if i decide to use it 
I literally, I have nothing to hide. As I said, my doctors know my condition and what have you, that if I decide to use DAS, if, if it helps Disney to kind of weed out the, the people who are abusing the system, I say go, go for it because the people who are going to be up in rage and hands up saying, what is Disney doing? Why are they doing this? Yada, yada, yada. Well, not to accuse, but those are probably the people who are taking it for granted and abusing the system. Right, right. And you're not allowed to do that, correct, though? To to ask people for proof? Well, what they're, what they're doing is, yeah, so they're kind of like weeding around it, that they're not actually asking directly. So, But this is what the training is going to do with the cast members. They're actually going to work with a... Um, healthcare healthcare uh, company that you have to apply for the DAS prior to your trip. Gotcha. Okay. So you're going to have to probably go through um, a website that'll probably be linked onto Disney, but it'll probably redirect you to the health um, page where they'll ask you questions. I even think that they're going to have even like, if you have any accommodations or questions that you could actually zoom call, um, but also to train cast members on what is considered for DAS or if they need other kind of accommodations. Like for me, um, OG had mentioned it in, in the article that it says that if it's something with a queue, that it'll allow you to like a queue pass to come back into line. If you have to exit, I have no problem with doing that. You know, if mm -hmm. that's what they feel like is accommodating for, for my issues, you know, then that's what they seem fit. Then that's what I'll do. Because it, 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 it seems more targeted as to like what your condition is, you know? Right. And then also here's the thing. I think two things can exist at the same time, right? Like I think it's good that Disney is, is, is kind of clamping down on the abuse because there's a lot of it. Let's be honest. Right. There's a lot of it at the same time. We can't deny that they want to funnel more people into the paid fast pass. Right. Like if everyone's getting it for free through this DAS thing, we got that's a problem for the bottom line. So I think there is a there's a financial interest there for Disney, absolutely. But also, hey, the system also needed, you know, to get reformed because there is a lot of abuse, and we've been talking about that for a long time. And and I do think too that this will also help out with the Genie Plus and Lightning Lane issues because if Disney just released that information today of the the data of sixty percent of the people in the return time are DAS holders than to kind of alleviate to maybe like having so many people with this condition have at this time, you know, you, you get into the line, you have to leave, mm -hmm. you can come back. I think it'll be a much better guest flow and a uh, friend and also collaborator of the channel. Mr. Slimer had pointed out mm -hmm. to me also shout out to Slimer um, that the, not only do they enter, they mix in the DAS people with, the lightning lane and genie plus people, but then it also merges into the standby line. So you essentially have four different groups of people going into one line where, wherever that bottleneck area is in the line. And I feel like now it really makes sense as to why, when we see Peter Pan's flight and there's a line all the way backed up by Cinderella, uh, Cinderella castle, that could be the issue. Or when we see, um, as as uh, Candid had mentioned, like the line for pirates that literally loops around over the bridge down into Adventureland, you know, this is probably a big problem. And I think I, I give kudos to Disney for addressing the issue, but not doing it in a way where it is kind of <laughs> singling out the people that really do need these services. Right. And I'm curious too, right? Because we talk a lot about HIPAA, right? Which is like the protect privacy protection, basically right. by hiring. And I don't know the answer to this, but by hiring a third party healthcare provider that specializes in healthcare, I wonder if that, I'm, I wonder if there's like, cause when you apply for this thing online and I'm sure it's through that third party too, right? That's involved in it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you sign away your HIPAA stuff. So they can get a little more detail on what you need. It's, it's possible. There may be some red and yellow tape around there because as far as I know, now with for Disneyland, I'm trying to remember which one is which. One starts May 20th and the other starts in June. Um, okay. That I, I believe it's Disneyland starts May 20th. Um, 
up until May 19th, it kind of, it, it is staying the way that it is where you can kind of go to guest relations and, and apply for your DAS there. Um, but starting May 20th, they are, um, that's when it goes into full effect that you have to, um, you have to literally go online and it's going to be interesting because Disney world is more of a vacation destination right now until Disneyland forward. Um, and I say when, not if, um, <laughs> that people can then prep and pe prepare themselves right. for this. But with Disneyland, when you have majority of locals <clears throat> going on an everyday basis right. and there are locals that are abusing the system it is going to make them say, oh, my gosh, I got to do this every single time right. I want to go into the park. So it's going to alleviate the notion of like, OK, I'm going to get. And honestly, they said now Disney didn't really deny or confirm, but they said on their website that they are they will take drastic measures that if anybody moving forward is caught abusing the system or falsifying uh, ailments of information than what they all really have, you will get uh, permanently banned from all U.S. parks. That's crazy. And now, I mean, now with a lot of this facial recognition coming online, I know Universal is really big <laughs> on that. I think Disney, I'm sure they're going to get onto that too out here in California eventually. That stuff is, it, you're not going to be able to hide, you're not going to get in, you're not going to be able to sneak in. And like, if you're banned, you're not getting in. They're going to know. Oh, yeah. No. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so I say to all the Oh, really quick time. So, yeah, so to all the people, you know, if, if, and again, I'm not accusing, I'm just saying just overall, if obviously there are people out there that are abusing and I'm looking out for you because if you, if you love Disney the way we do, I would highly strongly recommend that stop while you're ahead because Disney is warning you now and you may not get caught the first time you may not get caught the second time but if and when you do those are the repercussions so if that's the case i would strongly recommend you to stop doing it before all this gets implemented so you could still go in and enjoy the parks that you love Absolutely. but sorry go ahead. go ahead tones go ahead tones no i was just gonna say like um like you said they might if they might have to register online and all that stuff like that what happens to those people who are like oh let's let's go to disneyland today you still have and, to do it in advance, like 20 to, I think it's like two to three, 30 days in advance. I, yeah, two to 30 days in advance. If you just want to go <laughs> as like on a whim to yeah. say, Hey, let's go to Disneyland. Well, one good luck with trying to get a reservation on that same day. Um, yes, but right. if, if you are lucky enough to get one, um, chances are, then you're just going to have to go through the motions of the day because gotcha. once okay. May 20th comes, it's it's you know bar none but also they also add, changed a little bit too right now you can have up to six people um attached to your das they are going to mm. take it down to four um but if you happen to have unless it's family if it's if it's family like if you just to say have three kids and two adults they will accommodate that but not like aunt and uncle and fucking bob down the street <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah. A fucking Bob's gonna have to wait in the fucking queue. <laughs> now, do you think they should? Do you think they should minimize it to just one guest, like one other guest with the person with the pass, to make it a little fair? So, like the parent and the child, or the yeah, the, or, the or like 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 say wife, say Cannon wanted to go on and he had the pass and he had five of us, but he can only choose one to join him with the pass. Like, don't you think that'd be a little bit so, more than I think that can family. work. I think that could work. But think of it this way: a good way to do that is say say it was a child that has the pass, and yeah. then you know it's only down for two. And then you use the pass and get a um a ride swap. I think that would be fair. That way, that second person, the dad or the mom or whoever, significant yeah. other, can go on with the child. And I think that's what the training is going to be because they're going to have to have intertwine all this stuff for accommodations. That say if there is an adult that has, um issues or ailments but they also have kids so they can maybe kind of train the cast members in how to maneuver like with the child swap pass with the das or maybe with the 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 q pass or whatever they're 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 going to call it but uh mike i actually want to hear from you uh yeah. questions comments concerns opinions because I, I know we haven't heard michael all, all uh, uh, well, mike because uh, uh jump 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 in there <laughs> he must have looked at that moon the other night <laughs> <laughs> i know right <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I wanted to point out that it was interesting that they said uh, it's intended for guests with uh, developmental disabilities, such as autism or something similar. So I'm wondering if for the DAS itself, if they're going to change it to, uh, again, these people who have these disabilities still have to present why they can't wait in a queue, Correct. right, in a, in a conventional yeah. queue. But I'm wondering if that's kind of going to be their target demographic or the DAS itself. I think, then, I, think so, I think so, Mike, because that's how we were talking on the phone because um, with, with my issues, I won't get into, like, uh, details, but I have a lot of... Y'all know it's a womanizer, bro. We know that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder where, they, wonder where they throw that on the list. Um, but, <laughs> um, but with me, like, I have a lot of... Um, stomach intestinal gastro issues so if that is where it's more um neurological sense where maybe that's where they are creating the cue um pass thing because if i have to exit the line for my condition but they have a way to come back so into the line Okay, so that's interesting. So, like, okay, let's say you have, for example, I'm not diagnosing George. I'm saying in general. Let's say they, let's say someone has IBS, and you're halfway in the midway mania line, and you got to take a shit. You got to take a mean shit, right? So this <laughs> this process will let you leave the line, the regular line though, the regular queue. You can leave the regular queue, go do your biz, and come back. Is what they're saying. That's I think so far. Yeah. That's what they're saying. And I guess if you have multiple people in your party, that I guess that they either keep them in the line or they put them in a queue. So then when you return, then you all go back into the line together. But where's the cutoff part? See, like, that's oh, what I don't know. Like I don't know. Like where? Like if someone is actually in a line, I don't know, Mike. Maybe you can. Maybe hey, you read... hey, cast member, I need to shit. But, but yeah, so yeah, so if you like literally like. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, yeah, like literally, if you're like in a spot where there's no cast members around, or that you have to like, there's no emergency exit. But then again, how are you? <laughs> how are you? Then, <laughs> how are you then going to show proof of that? Well, I guess okay. So no, I, never mind. I, I just answered my own question there because then you'd have to fill out the health information before you go. So I guess if if the health third party organization says okay, your stamp of approval to get the the Q pass, I guess they'll have that linked onto your ticket or your pass for when you go. But as far so, as well, what you're saying, it. that's what I'm saying. So I don't know, like. But then you, why would you, even, why would you even get in line at that point? See, I don't know. See, I see certain things I can understand where Disney's trying to go, but I think it's going to cause a, a, a different mm -hmm. kind of mess. No pun intended. Okay, okay, okay well, but well, but I think but I think too that's a kind of a way to kind of weave out the people because I think that what they're trying to do is they're trying to kind of discourage the people to that are trying to use the system. Like, if you really don't need to use it, don't use it. Yeah, hundred percent. What, what's up? What's up, Michael? Right. So, so here's the thing with that, right, is, you know, that could, you know, work for some cases, right? But there's a bunch of other like disabilities that maybe that might not work for as well, but then they're also not qualified for the regular DAS. So is Disney going to have other type of um, systems or options to accommodate other people? Um, I'm assuming that's a very good question because the fact that they just made this announcement today but then wdwnt had hinted like several days ago that, that <clears throat> disney was doing this but disney officially made the announcement today but the fact that they're starting this process in may and june for both disneyland and walt disney world that pretty much tells me that they already have mm -hmm. everything kind of locked in place in their end of the logistics behind it so i don't know as far as it as we get a little bit closer they may make those announcements or they may not make any kind of announcements on Disney's behalf. You might have to get those answers once you go through the third party health. System. Yeah. And they mentioned in that, in that Disney tours blog where it's like, they're going to, they're going to analyze your, your condition. You're going to tell them what's wrong or what you, you know, and they're going to figure out the best plan for you basically. Well, cause, so, cause here's the thing, right? Let's say you're in the middle of line, any angels. Now I know in like a lot of the bigger rides, I like those like checkpoints, throughout the queue right but let's say you're at a point in the line where 
you know, you're at a standstill and something happens, you got to exit, right? And let's say you're a solo traveler and there's no cast member, except you have to walk all the way down over here. What are you going to do? Say, oh, hey, I was in this spot or are they just going to kind of maybe, I don't know, maybe time to see how long it takes for those people that you point out to get to a certain place maybe. And then when you come back, they bring you in over there. I don't know how it's going to work. So we got to see. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Mike. No, say so we gotta see because they said that the the details of that system will come at a closer time to the launch of the new DAS uh, stuff. Without yeah. putting them back in where the fast pass starts. So <clears throat> even if you're past the 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 initial, so Space Mountain, for instance, or Indy, you have that a bridge. You make it past the bridge. You're halfway in there. Like fuck, dude, I got shit. <laughs> I just ate fucking corn dog. Um, I gotta go. Chipotle, <laughs> and, and you dip out, and you tell them like, "Hey, you know what? Here's my pass. Can you scan me? I have to go." Um, so yeah, we're turned back to the bridge. Get to walk up the the normal pathway for the fast pass. You get let in right there. So kind of like how it normally is now, right? You just don't get to reset where you're at. You just got to start off. You just start over. Yeah. Um, well, I think that like pot. Well, well, see, because here's the thing: though. if you're someone who has these issues, like you know like for real and what what at what point for the guests is that a good guest experience if they keep having to restart in a line over and over again because of their disability or their issue that's not a good guest experience that's a horrible right. guest experience so i don't think that's going to work what about what having point? like a like a midway scan <clears throat> the people like if you're midway through the the line or, or have a cast member midway through Hey, I scanned my thing, so you no, know, I was in line for a while, and then once you come back because your condition, back into the other line, fast pass. Or, or do you think maybe if you were to leave and then come back, you would just scan through the lightning lane line? I don't, so I don't, I don't ride, know. How many ride? You can't do that for every single ride, though, because if, no. you're, stuck, if you're stuck in like certain queues, you're you're fucked. You're not and that's out. why. Right. But but I also think too, to your point, candid. I think that's just the thing. The overall das. It allows you to kind of, it's almost like how Disneyland used to have the max pass, sort of speak. So it kind of like overlaps one or the other. Like when you scan through one, you can make another and you just go through that throughout the whole entire day. Where I think like with the, the Q pass, you only utilize that mm -hmm. when needed. It's not going to be used for each. And I think, again, that is to alleviate because there are people with different underlying conditions, but when you throw people in that say like, as a, like someone that has like gastrointestinal issues, um, IBS, Crohn's, Crohn's disease. disease, exactly. And you're throwing them in with, um, with someone who, um, uh, has, um, neurological disorders, you know, or what have you, or anxiety or, or what have you, you're throwing them all in together at once, but you all have the same accommodation. And I think that's what this new system is. It's to, I guess, to kind of customize each one's experience based off of your, your individual health condition. But yeah, but I, to your point, like, I don't under, I don't, I don't see how, leaving the line going into a return line unless is it possible and i mean this is kind of far-fetched do you think it's like kind of like that front of the line sort of thing that a cast member will then guide you to kind of be set off because there's real there's no real proof of where you were at in the placement of the line so right. could, it, could a cast member lead you to kind of like the front of the line hold you off till the still, next train cheating though so at what point can, can i'm gonna play devil's advocate so everyone out there don't worry i got I, I've, oh, I'm a gluten intolerant. Really, Go ahead. really, really, really quick. And you're right that 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 is that is still cheating. But the only difference is you're not going to be able to do that with every single ride. Fair. So I wonder but, if they'll have that like clocked in that maybe like in a certain. Yeah. But then again, too, that, that makes and that makes the argument. But each person's different because yeah. somebody's stomach might have frequency mm -hmm. every 20 minutes, where another person might be every hour. You well, know. So so I, well, see, and so I'm sorry, Ken, real quick. I'm sorry. Um, but the thing with every ride, but George, here's the thing though, DAS, you can use it for any ride. It's not just a lightning lanes, you know, you can use it for right. Alice, Peter Pants, No White. Right. Like you can use it for all those rides because it's a disability access pass. Right. But so. you're not eating, you're not getting eaten. My my whole thing is is the the big people eaters. Like those rides that you want to use the DAS pass on. 
right which the only one in fantasy land you're pretty much going to use is on uh, use it on is going to be um is going to be uh what's his name peter pan like that's the only one that would make sense to to do that but once yeah. you're in that your pan line how the fuck are you getting out of there you're you're stuck there like you're you're so <laughs> confined in that place uh but what i was gonna say the devil's advocate bonobos the other in that side, line, dude. um i'm gluten-free so if i even eat something remotely with wheat or gluten in it i'm gonna shit myself so i get it i if if i gotta go i gotta fucking go but at the same time i, I mean if you know you gotta shit you gotta shit before you get on the ride but as you and, said candid like but or by the I, past george that's the other thing. If you know you have to frequency this much, buy the fucking Genie Plus. That's what I think Disney is encouraging people to do. Yeah, I Which, think what wrong, it if, is... you, if you have an issue, go, go you, or an issue or something like neurologically wrong. Like, yeah, I'm all for it. I agree because there's times like even with my kid, like he he can't stand. I think sometimes. you're right. I think that's basically what the Q line is. I think what the the Q pass is not necessarily going to be like again for people to abuse the system. Like, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. It's like, yeah, you're right. I think it's like you you have to utilize it that maybe then if you talk to a cast member they can maybe accommodate you to a certain degree but i think you're right i think it's all in all that they can help you to a certain point but it's like to reset it but i think also to the same point i think you're right i think it's to encourage more people to purchase the genie plus because people are going up to say fuck this i don't want to spend 30 dollars a day for how many days i'm here i'm going to go and abuse and cheat the system i'm going to get or this charge for free. charge for the death mess <laughs> Half, you could do they make that they, pass fifteen dollars, which half the price. <clears throat> you don't get to pick your rides how you normally do. Like, just take away half the shit from the normal pass. You're still gonna have people doing the DAS pass, but guess what? Yeah. Now money. here's you're, the you're, other you're thing. Now here's money. the other thing too that because as Disney had pointed out, now they haven't actually said these words, but in a way on the website when I was talking about like you would for the people who are going to continue on abusing the system moving forward once this is implemented say they get on with the the health organization third party they do a screening they they answer the questions they talk to someone but all in all they're spewing out lies and and falsified information Mm. once disney once they get to disney and they say if and Mm. once they find out you would be banned for life in a sense i'm i'm curious to know how they would kind of solidify that because are you as a cast member really going to walk up to someone and say i don't believe you now there you go again with the violation of hipaa because you're then accusing someone whether or not it's true or not they may be they may be abusing the system but is it a cast member's place to then approach someone because in the unlikely event you approach someone who really does have those underlying conditions you're fucked disney screwed yeah well, the and way the, the way Candid uh, uh, ex- described his experience, they might come up to you and ask you that those questions, the cast members, because it's just no. You said you they don't. It's not normal, or they're not like they were. Right? Yeah, and 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 that's true. And there, but there's also rules like you have to follow. And I agree well, with you, George. Like no one's just gonna walk up to you and be like, "Hey, dude." I saw you eat that gluten the other day or earlier today. You're going <laughs> to shit yourself, aren't you? And then they're going to sit there and time you. Oh, he didn't shit himself yet, but he's going to go get on that ride. Yeah. Like they're not going to fuck In a way, that. I kind of feel like not Disney is kind of like falsifying their own information, not like a, necessarily a bluff. I do think that if it, they do have the proof of someone abusing the system, you will get banned for if life because it covers Disney ass because it covers Disney's ass. Yeah, because if I they agree. ban somebody for life, then it's like, hey, it's implemented in our website. We have it there black and white. But I think it's more they so just to kind of scare people and to say, oh, my gosh, if I do this, I'm taking a risk that if they catch me, I can get banned for life. I think that's more like of a playing like a like a I poker track, bluff card. How you try? You don't make them wear a fucking name badge, right? And even if you do the the facial recognition and it's tied to your your phone or your pass and everything, there's still no proof that if anyone's using it, they don't know. Like again, if you have a condition that you have to excuse yourself, what are they going to have a cast member follow you into the bathroom? Like it's yeah. you, well, walk, so through, they, you walk through it. Well, see, and here's the kind of double-edged sword, right? Is that a lot of people you see going through Lightning Lane, you don't know who's Genie Plus, Lightning Lane, or Das Pass, right? But on the right. flip side, for some people, that's a comfortable thing because some people don't want to. Because here's the thing: there's a lot of disabilities that you cannot tell by looking at. Correct. Them. Correct. Yeah. 
so you don't want the spotlight on yourself. Exactly. So that kind of you know blends them in, and that has this focus on them of them having a disability, right? And you know, because I was also thinking too, right? The big problem with Genie Plus or the whole lightning like thing in general is you have you just t- said it, George. It all merges together, right? And like at Universal, when uh, when me and uh, OG and Wizard went. You know, I loved how their express pass was a separate line, right? <clears throat> and so you had single rider, separate line, you know, express pass, separate line, standby, separate line. I'm glad you brought that up, Eva. Do you think that moving forward with Disneyland <laughs> forward, huh, moving forward with Disneyland forward, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, do you think with the new rides and attractions moving forward, do you think Disney could then change the, the, um, the overall infrastructure infrastructure and operations <clears throat> so they would have a line for each individual no thing. they don't they wouldn't do that that's just you a waste of, no still 60 60 percent of people are using das pass you do it the right way you figure out a way that goes probably down to 30 percent you want to up the the genie plus to 60 to 70 percent use so you're not going to make a third lane for 30 percent people and take away a, a special queue spot for standby and for those 70 now 70 percent people that are going to be in that in that genie plus queue because Gen- right. i've seen the genie plus queue get fucking all the way back to like back right back. Well, we'll see but ken that's the thing that's why you freaking upcharge high the genie plus because if you don't now everybody's going to be in the genie plus still probably the same amount of people because now everybody's going to flock to genie plus and the, yeah these don't have all that money but when you got look at universal like they're cute granted it was a slower day but their express queue goes straight to the front of the attraction there was like no line going out the door around the corner so i think that's where also disney needs to cut out the return times and also um and also not have it integrated with like the line to, to stand by and then also up the price how much is that one. pass how much is the pass for universal uh I, as so there's two versions right i think the the, the regular express i think it's one ride per attraction for the day i believe that's like a hundred or a hundred or something per person and then there's the unlimited which is like over 200 bucks okay so think of it this way you have what is it, <clears throat> three to three and a half people for disneyland versus one person in in universal for a pass those lines are cut in half you have probably double to triple the amount of people walking in those gates per day at disneyland if you raise the price to fifty dollars, they're going to make that money back. I don't think Disney. I think if Disney raised to a hundred dollars, you would be. They would lose money at the end of the day. I don't. Well, I don't think they'd be able to get away with it. Well, no, and I agree with you. And here's why: because because even though I just said what I just said, I agree with you because it's that's Disney's fault. They put themselves in that position by by having the fast pass being free in the first place. And you know yeah. what would actually why? So remember, I told you I didn't buy my fast pass. I the only thing that cut, kept me from buying fast pass, besides buying it for multiple kids and all that, was the fact that I only get on, get to go on one ride. When I went to Disney World, I bought it because I got to go on every fucking ride multiple times. That's mm-hmm. a big difference. I want to go on Space Mountain all day and marathon that shit, and and have to wait every single time. I wanted to be able to have that option. You don't well, tell right. me like one that's once. Exactly. And that's that's also my problem with Genie Plus is that, you know, before when we had Fast Pass slash Max Pass, if I want to do Thunder Mountain all day, I could, as long as yeah. the, the Fast Passes were available, right? But I could do that on Genie Double Plus. Charge me there, then. That's why I there. wish that's why I wish that they would just bring back the Max Pass. I absolutely love Disneyland's Max Pass. I wanted yep. Walt Disney World to incorporate the Max Pass and got rid of that Fast Pass Plus shit that you are only allotted three attractions in one day. <clears throat> And then if there's anything left after 6 p.m., which um, what, what's left, uh, it's a small world and Mickey's Philhar magic. Yeah, yeah okay. Exciting men there. <laughs> um, that I would rather have them done that and, yeah, upcharge it more. And as I said, even to me now, I'm only speaking for myself. You know, there have been several people, several friends that have – um, that I have talked to like prior to me getting DAS of saying, Hey, there is a program out there at the Disney parks based off of what you have and your condition. So I ended up, you know, using it, you know, because I qualified under their, their, uh, their, their, um, 
the um pre 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 rex <laughs> yeah basically um to what the cast member. so when i talk to a cast member if they felt like of what i was telling them because i as i said i i'm i'm an open book it, i i don't have to tell the cast members because of the hipaa privacy but i have nothing to hide i will tell them what i have and they were they <clears throat> were gracious enough they they gave it to me you know one way or another um but as i said for me and only speaking to me i have no problem <laughs> with buying genie plus as long as it works as long as it works for me and if this is the way that it works to encourage people to buy genie plus i have no problem with purchasing genie plus i have no problem with buying individual lightning lanes you should see me when i go to walt disney world you should see me buy the freaking lightning lanes for cosmic rewind because i tell you what for that freaking ride i will spend twenty dollars per day for how many times that I want to go on that ride, and I don't give a shit. I'll spend eighty to hundred dollars just to ride that ride. That's how much I love that ride. Um, but and again, if Disney was to raise the bar even more beyond Das Pass, and and uh, and uh, raise the prices for Genie Plus, I have no problem with that either because then that will eliminate. A lot of the Genie Plus is in the line along with the DAS holders, and it'll let the guest flow in the standby line go. And see, so everybody thing, would win. The thing is, though, is that Disneyland was not made for Genie Plus. Disneyland no. was made for Paper Fast Pass, and that worked so beautifully. <clears throat> and it's it honestly made people lose weight because you, have, if you wanted to ride something at a certain time, you had to run your ass all the way to Space Mountain and then all the way back to Indy to get on Indy. And I loved that that chase, that that cat and mouse game between rides. And at that point, those lines, dude, what lines? There was no lines for any ride because you were everything was just cohesive. Well, right, exactly. Ken. Here's the thing too, with that, right? It was free. And since it was free, or you know, it was including your mission ticket, right? It was fair game for everybody. Yeah. You know? So hey, well, you know, you say, yeah. raise the price of tickets. Raise the price of tickets, $15. <clears throat> back paper fast pass i mean or, they could, and then up charge or up <laughs> so here you go 15 dollars extra on the tickets for paper you can get a paper one but you have to scan your phone and still just like normal or you pay the 35 or 40 dollars for the fast pass on your phone to be able to digitally do it and not have to run across i mean they could the they could do that but also at the same time with all these expansions and disneyland forward you know these tickets are going to even go up for with that oh, too no, yeah, so they you're, are. you're probably going to look at it like a 30 dollar <laughs> increase like oh. no, no let, 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 let me rephrase that 15 dollars for the expansions <laughs> and then 15 dollars for your idea for the fast pass oh, so there's the 30. and you know <laughs> so, at that point those at that point when those parks open or those expansions open I could see Genie Plus becoming more of a value for sure. Right. So, 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 question, right, for you guys. Um, so, with the DAS, right? I know, uh, George, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know at least in uh, Disneyland Paris, there are uh, people who want the to be in the disability system, they are required to show proof <laughs> of their disability or issue to the cast members there because they don't have that law like we have here. Mm. Correct. And I also think, and I could be wrong, I, what is universal? Because I know Universal changed their um, implementation for the disability services as well. Do they? Do you have to show proof to them as well? Uh, they um, they have a they, they have a third party company they go through as well. Um, and I I so don't quote me anybody on this, but if I remember, it's you you know you apply for it, and then I think you talk to that third party. Or what have you, you, you put your application in and stuff like that. And then Universal will ask you, um, and then you go to them. But but even if you're approved through that, th through that third party, you're not guaranteed to get the their version of the disability. Okay. Yeah, because I know, I think, like, their, their implementations and their strategic way of how they're doing it is different from what Disney just released today. But, yeah. uh, and the reason why I ask is I've never used... Um, any of the services at Universal, I have at Disney, and I have at Knotts, um, but I, right, I so haven't I, at Universal. So what it sounds like is like Universal. Um, <clears throat> it's a kind of a one all disability pass where um, if you're approved, you 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 make it uh, access. You may not depending on what your issue is. At Disney, it seems more like they're using like healthcare professional advice and training cast members to kind of okay, what's each 
each person's condition and what they're dealing with and, or disability, and then we'll make the judgment call off of um and off, off of what to accommodate for that individual that's what it sounds like to me in respect to both different parks interesting <clears throat> okay yeah i i think honestly it, it's going to be rocky you know it's it there's going to be a lot of kinks moving forward with this at the starting point but i think once all those kinks are kind of fleshed out um i do think that this would probably be in in the better um, as long as Disney keeps up with the demand of all things, with DAS, with Genie Plus, with Lightning Lane, with Standby Line, because Disney right now, operational wise, they're not necessarily the top dog when it comes to operational. Um, and I think Disney has to kind of get themselves prepped and prepared for this. Um, especially with the cast members that they're actually going to be training for this because there's going to be a lot of people standing in line at guest relations, whether yeah. it's issues with them getting denied, whether there's issues with returning um, there. I, I just think it's, it's going to be a mess one way or the other. I'm, I'm anticipating that. It's going to be months and months of training. Too. And honestly, just, and honestly game. for me, and I'm again, I'm just speaking of me. I would personally rather just pay for the Genie Plus, not saying because I don't feel that my condition is worthy of a DAS. As I said, they have given me DAS in the past. If they think that there's a different implementation for it, I'm all ears. I'd be willing to comply and and accept whatever they give me. However, I would personally just rather would pay for Genie Plus to alleviate one less thing of a headache that I have to deal with when planning a Disney trip. Well, make, I'm already, make I'm already, because I'm already planning for airfare, hotel reservations, exactly. park reservations, dining reservations. It's like I would rather just pay for it. And just I don't have to worry about dealing with all the the hoops and all that. Not necessarily. Talking to a health professional, have no problem with doing that. As I said, my life's an open book. I'll talk to anybody about it. But it's just the the operational issues that is going to come with this. I don't want to have to be standing in a in a three hour line at at guest relations to get these issues resolved because along with everybody else. Because then th there goes more time of my park experience. I'd rather just pay and just enjoy enjoy my day. And so, I think so that's I have, the right route to go. Make it more so, difficult for people, but obviously difficult for the right reason to make sure that people correct, are correct. showing correct. because you are going to weed out those people that are not going to want to go. Exactly. To and and that's, and that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. And mm -hmm. as I said, I would rather just pay for it just so I don't have to be in the, the, the crossfires of all that shit. <laughs> so, so George, what, what you're saying is, is they're is there not making it very easy for you? <laughs> <laughs> but, that's great um so so uh, real quick oh geez sorry um so i actually kind of want to go back to the last topic real quick with candid um yeah. with oh, fine cast. shit whatever hey, <laughs> <laughs> um so so about the cast member thing right um yeah I, i've noticed you know there's been a few kind of hiccups with the cast members here and there uh, I mean, like, I mean, in terms of what I've seen, I know nothing horrendous, nothing like that, but just kind of, okay, that's not very kind of Disney, but okay, whatever. Um, now, obviously, you know, you guys know what I do for my other job. Um, and I didn't really know this until I stepped into this. And I actually, I actually even told OG about this when we went to Universal that I didn't realize how much of the differences between just working kind of like your regular kind of like real retail job and then working like guests facing trying to make the magic and for a guest like you you would think there would be there is some similarity and there, there's some like overlap but when you're like in there it's a very different experience and you ha you have to go that extra mile that extra way to make the guests happy make them feel like there's magic there you know it is different exactly and i agree with you and i'm not like i'm not going around looking for fucking magic from every single cast member right. I'm looking, but i'm looking for a smile 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because I just spent six hundred freaking dollars. I want to fucking smile. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm happy spending six hundred dollars right now. I'm gonna smile when I go to get my food. I walk in the park. I want to say hey, I want someone to say hey to me, man. Like right. that's how it was before. And mm-hmm. even as a kid, like remember growing up and going to the parks, everyone was always smiling. Hey, you see a kid grabbing their balloon. There's like, yeah, man. I didn't get that feeling this time. It was just kind of people like funneling in a row cast members just pointing people in directions or using the fucking wand go that way bro it, it go, just, go go yeah, it, <laughs> it, go yeah you can't go there don't go there like, dude. I, yeah I asked, I asked someone where the um where the condiment bar was because i couldn't i didn't see it and they just pointed me over oh it's gonna be over there on the other side of that wall and i'm like whoa okay I mean, I could walk over down. You should have just, text just texted me. I knew where all the condiments were. I mean, come on, <laughs> I'm the condiment yeah, king. Sure. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. But, 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 but yeah, I mean, but yeah, bro. I mean, it's it, it's it's really about that guest interaction with them. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. you you know, you you you're there to make their experience great. You want them to be happy. You want to smile at them. You know, you want them to feel welcome there. Yeah. And I and I and and before doing this, I didn't realize how much of an impact that actually makes. So, okay. yeah, and, and yeah. people like, and especially when you have a big platform like you know OG and George, everybody like that, and you have someone mm-hmm. like me come on and say this, it, it gets seen by the community. And I also know how it's going to go because I've been doing this for a while. You're going to have all these comments. Oh, he's just saying this, and he's a dick because of this, dude. <laughs> number one, I don't give a fuck what you say. Excuse my language. <laughs> number, number two, it's my money that I spent to go there, and that's what the experience I want. But at yeah. the same time, I get it. I don't need to be pampered the whole fucking time either. Yeah, I don't. Right, but right. you expect a certain level from who, Disney. Who doesn't like to get pampered does. once in a while? Dude. Oh, I mean, please. I like to get pampered all the time. Exactly. Like, what the hell? And you deserve that when you go to Disney. And, I, and we've been we've, we've had that for years. So why change it now? And well, charge me. well, exactly, Candid. And that's the thing. Disney, they're the ones that set that standard. You know, exactly. and you know, it's dipping. You know, they gotta and, get that and, back up. And just really quick, I know I'm going like way off a topic, but it, it's part of this <laughs> conversation. But uh, God, I'm pulling a candid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that, how it's creeping in, George. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's just like with the Disney Cruise Line. It's like you go on a Disney cruise, the service that you get, whether you are in a regular basic stateroom or you're staying in concierge. Every single Disney cast member on those ships treats every single person as if you're literally paying 20 grand a night to stay on that on that ship. Dude, on the wonder, my mom just asked the lady for some chips. Like Mm. just all she wanted was some chips for with her meal. The girl goes, she goes, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. She comes back up with like the, like the, uh, the, the massive, like unmarked bag they use in like the, like the back room somewhere. Oh shit. <laughs> massive, like, dude, this bag was like a sack of potatoes, bro. Like literal, <laughs> a literal sack of potatoes. And it was like unmarked in the whole thing. I was like, here you go. I'm like, all she wanted was a handful, you know, like a little bag <laughs> or something. They brought a whole freaking thing. Disney cruise line, dude is like second to none when it comes to customer service. They go the extra mile. It really does put the parks to shame. And, and look what you just said. That's the experience I want to get when I go to Disney. And, right? And it, I don't need it every single time, but it was consistent throughout my whole trip that it was not like that. And I think yeah. that's what you realize. Yeah, well said, well said. By the way. Let's pivot now to the movies. We got Disney film release calendar as of April 5th of 2024. We got a lot of stuff on here. We got Kingdom of the Apes. <laughs> Night bitch, yeah, we got Night bitch on there. You know what I'm saying? We got Moana two. We got Mufasa. It's a, it's a, it's a um, Lion King prequel. You know, they're gonna do the whole Lion King lore thing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we got Fantastic Four. We got Thunderbolts. Tones. I'm gonna start with you, brother. Like, what are your thoughts on this overall slate? We got Mando and Grogu coming out in a couple years. Are you feeling it, or is it kind of underwhelming to you? Oh, I'm feeling it. Um, Deadpool and Wolverine. I mean. I'm definitely loving that kingdom. The planet of the apes is something that um, they've always done really well on, which is, which is pretty cool. But the one thing I'm happy I'm not seeing here, especially this year is a ton of Marvel movies, which is a good thing. Yeah. But you know, the, we, we've mentioned, I'm, I'm sure on here before and on my show, but nothing but Marvel movies is not a good thing anymore. Especially what they've been putting out, but I'm I'm happy to see that there's only 
We're only getting Deadpool and Wolverine this year, as far as movies, um, if I'm not mistaken. And um, we got yeah. a Captain America: Brave New World as well. Well, oh, for for twenty for uh, twenty twenty five. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah so uh, it, one movie this year is, I hope, does it wonders because of the stuff we've been getting, and of course, Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be a great movie. Like it, it's a hard character, two hard characters to really fuck up. Excuse yeah. my language, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I'm all for it. I'm all yeah. for this uh, and, and Tron next year. I mean, come on. So, Tones, let me ask you this because I know we talked about it back on our show. Yeah. Having having them gap those Marvel movies, and they told us that they're going to do that. And you see the two, 2024 list, but then you hit 2025, and they do it again. Are they? And honestly, 2025 well, is going to be kind of a it's going to kind of be a shitty mo- a year for them. I, I do I do see a lot, but at the same time, they announced these year. I believe. A year or two ago, so they're putting time, at least time, into the and Blade, not, Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, uh, Captain America, Blade, yeah. and and like yeah, you, Blade. you, you, you see these movies coming out, and like I said, we, we've seen those. Um, what do they call the stages that Marvel puts out every five years or whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think that's what they're called, like stages. They they uh, announced. Uh, uh, Phases, phases, phases. phases. Yeah, phases. Right. Um, so we kind of anticipated this, but at the same time, this whole year we're getting one, which, it, like I said, it's a good thing. But like you said, it it could be a hit and miss. You never know with with the the next ones coming out next year, might be a hit or miss. Um, but you never know. But yeah, from what I'm seeing right now, I like it so far. The Fantastic Four, I think, is going to change the whole, yeah, the whole Marvel universe again. I think we're going to, after that, we're going to have you back on this right page, the right track with Marvel. I just hope and, they don't fuck it up. And another thing, uh, I hate talking Marvel, but um, <laughs> the the news came out that uh, Robert Downey Jr. has, I guess, interest, of, like he, or he would want to come back if they asked him because the, he loved being Iron Man so, so much. Um so we can get into all that, but you hear how many people would love to come back, yeah. play their big character, which is a good thing. Yeah, and and, and, the, and the fact, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, Tones. The fact that he said that tells me there's talks. Exactly. It tells me there's talks. Like they're they're thinking about bringing him back in, dude. That's gonna be crazy. Well, one, what, what do you? Oh, one, go ahead. One, one last thing about uh, Iron Man and Robert Downey Jr. It could be a good thing, but it also could be a really bad thing. They brought him back. There, there's there's two sides to that, but yeah, it depends. If they, they have to respect the character, you know, what I'm saying you, exactly. you can't bring him back, and and because the way he went out was kind of was was kind of dope, actually. You know, what I'm saying, yep. and if you bring him exactly. back in a weird way, then you're gonna fuck all that up. You know, yep. that's why Perfect. for me, I would say, as much as I love Robert Downey Jr., <laughs> I, I to me, he he's like the comeback king for me <laughs> when it comes to acting of how. He turned his life around and he became very successful with basically uh, spotlighting Marvel into the into the the, the phenomenon that it, it become because I mean it was it was essentially Iron Man oh yeah right. that that literally paved the way for everything it was Robert Downey Jr's uh, brilliant acting it was John Favreau's excellent directing you know and it's but I, again yeah I think when you have um, a uh, an end scene so powerful with emotion as you you got from Endgame when it comes to Tony Stark. I think to just kind of respect the character, yeah, to, and, and that ending because then that, that weakens Endgame. You're building up a new movie, right? But then you're weakening Endgame by doing that. Well, it's like the Toy Story thing, right? It's like you know the tr- the trilogy was kind of like people thought that trilogy was perfect. Oh, uh, we're gonna get onto that. Okay, oh, let's do we're, this. We're gonna get onto that, George. <laughs> we're gonna get onto that. That trilogy was perfect. It ended perfectly. Then they got it. Then they got to add Toy Story four. Now they got Toy Story five coming out too. Mm-hmm. So it's like y- you can you can definitely you can definitely Toy Story this this mm-hmm. Iron Man thing. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. What do you think, Eva? What, what What are your thoughts? Now you're 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 Spider Man, so you got a little bit of a bias. But what's going on? 
Uh, well, so, so, so am I going to go off this list or? Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, Any thoughts on the list? I mean, I, I, it's we got a lot. I mean, it goes all the way up to twenty thirty one, I believe. So, so by the, by the way, real quick, is, Alien looked amazing. Just the teaser trailer. Yeah, not really good. Yeah, I think, dude. I mean, honestly, besides Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, I think Alien uh, is like the one I'm like most excited for um, for the 2024 release. But what is what's Night Bitch? What is that? Well, actually, I'm actually I'm looking really forward to Night Bitch. I have no idea what it's about. I just wanted to say it. <laughs> it's, a, it's about a like a mom that's like stays home or something, and she's she happens. That's all oh. I know. Okay. Based off I, mean, I mean, so besides, so besides that, I mean, honestly, besides besides Alien and Deadpool and you know, Wolverine, I'm not, I don't, oh, and Moana too. Um, I don't really care for all the other movies that are on that list. Um, 2025, um, don't care for Snow White at all. Um, yeah, Utopia well, I two. I thought they ended that. Huh? No, that's still going. Oh, was done. What? Yeah, that's still going. No, that's still going. Not a recast or nothing. Mm-mm. No, nope. Really. That, that was like a lot of the YouTube channels ran with that. Like, oh, they're recasting this, that, but nah, it's, it's not. Yeah, yeah, they're not. Um, I, I think, I think that Thunderbolts is going to be really cool. Um, of course, Avatar three, uh, Blade. I've been waiting to see freaking Blade, man, but that keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. Um, so Zootopia two. I've to be honest, I've never seen the first one. Um. And the, all the other ones, uh, I don't know. Don't really. I mean, Captain America, I'll watch that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. You know, um, I'll watch some of these movies. Uh, I think I, I think the big one I'm excited for is Alien, honestly. Like that that trailer was so cool. I, I showed my wife. I was like, yo, I was like, look at this trailer. Oh, dude, it looks so dark and scary. I'm like, man, this is an alien movie, dude. Like, like this, like this, like type of uh, feeling from that trailer is what they need to put in, like, in a villain's land, or like for um, Halloween or something. They gotta have that. It actually felt like a horror movie, which was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like now, finally, man. I want to ask you guys, what are your thoughts on Mando and Mando and Grogu? Because this is the first Star Wars movie back since Rise of Skywalker, right? In my opinion, and then I'll take it over to you guys, but in my opinion, I think it's 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 a it's a smart idea business wise, right? Because the normies are gonna eat that shit up. With Grogu, come on, you can't go wrong. Your grandma will go see that movie, you know what I'm saying? But like from uh, even though she actually looks like him. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it's like, is this the right creative decision? What what do you think, George? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely a business standpoint. That is like a, a cash grab like mm-hmm. nobody's business. Um, I do think it's kind of risky though, because you were putting the Mandalorian and Grogu on such a high caliber that you're actually going to release them on the big screen. And quite frankly, I think the Mandalorian as a whole, as a franchise, like when it comes to merch and when it comes to, um, you know, meeting, meeting them in the parks, when it's like they're walking around galaxy's edge, I think it's really cool. As far as the series go, I feel like, as time progressed, the series kind of dipped for me a little bit. And I feel like that this could either be the, the comeback for the Mandalorian, but it also could be a severe downfall if, if it is not done properly. But as I said, I put full faith and trust in, in, uh, Filoni, Filoni and, and, uh, John Favreau for kind of like handling like all the logistics of this. Um, cause they're going to have to do it in a big way because it, this is a, a full length feature film. They're going to have to kind of make it its own <clears> where <throat> you can actually feel like it is a film and not just an, an episode, you know, uh, or part of the series. I, I totally agree with you, George. I was thinking the same exact thing. It, it is going to be really risky because they are turning a TV show that most people love. Um, it was a great TV show, in my opinion, but they're turning that into a full which could be extremely risky, George was saying. Um, but it could also diminish what he saw from the, the show. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, hopefully it doesn't happen like that. And we ho- hope we get a good, uh, hope we get a good movie, but time will tell. 
We'll see. We'll see. Which brings us to our next and final topic, which is tones. This is this is your this is your department right here, buddy. Uh, fresh off Epic Games deal, Disney bolsters video game executive ranks. It seems like they're getting real serious in regards to video games. Which to um, shout out to our to our boy Seymour Duck, but Value Act. He's been he's been talking a lot about Value Act in a lot of our videos. Value Act is big on the gaming stuff and what have you. They they've worked a lot with Nintendo. Is this Value Act's influence? Maybe, but it says here Disney gaming chief Sean Shopta has been promoted with Wizard and Ubisoft veterans joining as senior executive tones. What are your thoughts on this, man? They're, they're bringing in a lot of people from like these video, like Blizzard, U Ubisoft. What do you think this signals, brother? Really, um, really, really quick. Sorry, so sorry, tones. Before you say, I just have to just say this one thing. I didn't like fully read like the captions of these articles. All I saw was blizzard because it had to do with Disney. And I thought, why in the hell were they bringing people that were working on blizzard beach over to games? <laughs> like, what does that have to do with that? And then when I had to like read the whole thing, I'm like, okay, now that makes more sense. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> so sorry, tens C continue, bro. No, I, I was just going to say that, you know, the Ray, uh, Gres Gresgro? I believe that's his name he was the um chief developer officer at blizzard entertainment um and i'm happy they're not bringing in a dude who has to prove himself to a disney you know gaming the gaming part of disney this guy has proven himself already with um maybe not with the best games that they put out but he is was in that position of putting games out which which is very important instead of having someone promoted within disney and you know not having that background that he has it's good that they're hiring people who have that background because you know epic is a very successful um company now because of fortnite and how big fortnite is you kind of have to have someone with that you know similar background of putting out uh, success, successful games. So if the, going this direction, I think it's great. I think they're hiring um, the right people instead of just going out on a whim and and putting people in positions that they were never in uh, but, or but never what had. That get us? Hopefully, that's, that's good the way content. I'm but what you're using? Are you going to use original IPs? You're going to have to trap these people in. Well, Spider Man. So, that's yeah, it. So they're they're going to have to use. Um, Disney IPs within Fortnite or however, whatever the. Why do they need to hire all these people to do that? Why does there need to be a contract to do that? If you want to use this person or this look, this like, look like, use it for the game, pay us the royalties. So that's what I'm saying. Star, was it? Uh, not Stardew Valley. What's the game they just came out with? Starlight? Oh, um, uh, Disney Dream, Dreamlight, I Dream, think it Dreamlight. is. Amazing game. Really, really good. Did a great job on that. They didn't hire these people to make that. So what's your question? I don't I don't understand. I just don't understand why go this route, spend all this money trying to achieve something that they think that they're gonna be on Nintendo's level, which they're not gonna be able to do. They're they don't have a Mario. There is no Mario in Disney. So uh, well, so hold on, hold on. Uh real quick for George, because me and George play the same games on this, but I don't know. George, um so with Kingdom Hearts, right? Uh right. That's that's Square Enix, and they partner with with Disney Interactive. Is is Disney Interactive still around? As far as I know, well, because because I, I don't think say, I, I think I think the initial Disney Interactive, I think that department went down. Do not quote me on that. I don't think it's like titled as like what Disney Interactive used to be, where they used to have like a lot of the computer games, like that, right. that would be based off of the Disney films and what have you. I think it's just under the license brand of Disney that they are um, kind of giving uh, Square Enix the, the the rights to utilize their characters and their their worlds within the Final Fantasy. Uh, look at EA though. Range. EA owns all the all those rights to Star Wars stuff, so they're gonna get all that back and let Epic make. Well, well, as far as I know, they did uh, have a exclusive agreement with Disney, but not anymore, right? Like, like, like that that deal's done. So now, so now Disney can go to other uh, companies like Ubisoft or whoever to make Disney content. Yeah, and I think or, the uh, answer. 
Yeah, and I think to answer your question, Ken, I think I think it's important though when you're making decisions though on video games to have people like what Tony was saying to understand video games, right? So yeah, you can do all the licensing deals and all that, but like if you have a Disney person in there doing that, you're probably not going to get the same outcome as someone who's like a veteran in that gaming space. Is that kind of what you were saying, Tones? Right? Where it's it, like, it, 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 okay, uh, think of it like this: like these people that he he hired is going to be part being uh, what's it called? They're going to partner with Epic Games, who they invested in, and this is going to be Disney's side, making sure Disney benefits off the investment it had with Epic. So it's not just Epic benefiting themselves, and you know Disney has no um, has no view on what's going on. So yeah. these people have a you know kind of an overview of what that investment is for. And what I'm saying and, is that they're the future of it, though, you have yeah, their games. No, no, the, their Disney wants to expand and make its own gaming universe. And, and, and I and I get that. And if you look, if you look in the past with um, Disney Infinity, that was a hot hit for a minute because you used little pieces and puzzles. But throughout the whole Disney time, besides Sega Genesis, you know how you know those badass motherfucking games, gargoyles and shit. <laughs> Anyways, but you have Kingdom Hearts, and you have they didn't. Star they Wars. didn't benefit off those or off Disney, Infinity, but it's it's, it's still the same thing. You're still giving it to another company to make. <laughs> what, what's the difference between letting EA well, still have it and King? And there's still people are still going to play Kingdom Hearts and still going to play Star Wars games, no so, matter who's making the game. They're just so, part. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Sorry, sorry, Tom. So, Ken, what uh, what I think you're saying, and if you are, I agree to this. Um, I think. So I'm excited for Disney to get more into the gaming stuff because they've been really lacking in that stuff lately. I think Disney should because here's the thing: we have Lucas Games, right? So the, all the new Star Wars stuff and whatnot because they they shut down Lucas Arts um, and Disney Interactive. I don't think that's still a thing anymore. But I think Disney needs their own video game development company for Instead Disney. Instead of reaching out for something, they're using they're using Epic because of the name, and that's and that's kind of the route I'm going. Yes, I get it, Tones. You are benefiting from using Epic's name, and you're probably going to benefit from using these people. But once again, they only found fame because of. Do you think? Games. Do you think that's Disney's long term, like to kind of get their foot in the door with a high name brand like Epic, and then once they kind of get in there, they utilize everything, and then they can then move on to kind of creating their own. Division. I just don't. I just think they're going to be stuck in the same world that they're always in. And you're going to give me an IP based game where they play the music in the background. I jump on a fucking camel and jump on another <laughs> thing and do, 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 and go around. That's all the games are ever. That, that's why I think Sony made a big difference with, with the Spider-Man games. They actually put you in this giant world and, and made you play a story. And I haven't seen that out of any Disney game out of the last 10 it's because- years. Well, they stopped. That's why they stopped making video games like that. With the with the the infinity, what was it? Disney Infinity? Is that what yeah, it was? Disney, Disney Infinity. Infinity. Yeah, they stopped that. I think in 2016, they just they stopped make or the project was shut down because they were losing millions of dollars every year. For Which what was the the, the turning point for that in, in in the down the downhill trajectory of Disney Infinity? Because. I remember when that first came out. Yeah, that was like a hot seller. Like people were buying the packs, they were buying the figures, they were buying the the um, specialty like stickers to put on the, the the controllers and what have you. It's like where did it go wrong? Where it was like such like hot off the press to like a complete money blunder. I think a lot also too. Like we're in this Disney space like with Diz Twitter and things. So we see that stuff because we're we're in, we're like neck deep in a bunch of other Disney fanatics. So in our world, oh man, this thing is doing great. But reality was probably the normies weren't buying into it. Well, the normies well, and, need to cut their shit. Well, we'll, 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 we'll see because here's the thing, right? It's us Disney psychotic nerds are talking about this stuff, but the majority of the gaming population aren't probably Disney psychos like we are. You know, right. because what about the parks, the studios, the movies, right? Everybody else is playing Battlefield, Call of Duty, Halo, GTA, uh, you know. Uh, Boy, does that uh, scream Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, just, you know, just, uh, you know uh, Red Dead Redemption, you know, all these other games um, or even like Nintendo, right? Like 
I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of fans like myself who are a fan of both, but there's also probably a lot of fans who play video games who aren't fans of Disney or, or whatnot. So, so uh, okay, this may be a little bit far-fetched. Do you think Disney, I mean, sort of kind of like what OG was saying about the Mandalorian and Grogu movie, like financially, in a business standpoint, it's smart. But on the other hand, as far as a creative wise, as Tones and I were saying, we have to be very careful with it. So with the gaming world and the type of business the, the Disney Disney is, could that <laughs> potentially be where like up front it's a financial success business wise, but when it comes to the actual operations and long term do we see this kind of having legs? So can you, can you name another game from that Epic made besides Fortnite? Other than Fortnite? Mm -hmm. Gears, I'll uh, give you Gears of War because that was Gears of War. But can you name another game besides those two? But that's no. exactly that, how much longer is Fortnite gonna is gonna keep going? It's gonna that, that's not that's well, not what I, I think you're missing the point, Candid. Okay, so for me, not necessarily for Fortnite, but just for like the Disney portion of Fortnite, <clears throat> it, do you guys see that having legs, or do you kind of seeing it sizzle out like Disney Infinity? Because as well, we just as we just said right now, you have the people who are the norms, who are the gaming people. Which Mike, you said you are one, but you're also a Disney fanatic, so you have that best of both worlds. But if you kind of look at the majority of just the norms that play video games. Are they going to be in the liking of Disney as we are? I don't. I don't really know about that. Well, and 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 here's here's my thought too, right? Is that Disney, as we know, you know, they're very good at creating stories, right? Very good at storytelling, characters, and whatnot, right? But here's the thing: is Disney good at making great gameplay? Because because with video games now, you know, you know, you have a lot of things that are similar to when making a movie, right? You have motion capture, all this other cool stuff, right? But it's you know, thousands and thousands of people like a movie, you know, creating game, but you have to have the gameplay and candidate. What makes Spider-Man so much fun is not only, only are you playing as, you know, Peter Parker and Miles Morales as Spider-Man, you know, the gameplay is fun. And I don't know, I don't know, or even think Disney knows how to do that. The gameplay. And, and I think with Kingdom Hearts, Disney played it smart because then you're incorporating Square Enix Mm -hmm. or into the play where you have those hard hitting gamers that are into final fantasy that are into anime that are into the Japanese gameplay. So when you infuse that with the Disney worlds and the Disney characters and the Disney backdrop, exactly. It allows people to say subconsciously that you're then getting the final fantasy people that are like, okay, I'm not necessarily a Disney buff, but I'll still play this because it's interwoven with the, and, with and the final fantasy my characters. Point. And you're proving my point. How many games do they have that are going to be able to do that? You're just going to throw these characters into Fortnite. If you're using it in the way you just said, you're not going to go anywhere else. Fortnite's not going to be around forever. It's not a generational game. It's not Call of Duty. Like Call of Duty will always be there. Go to well, go to Activision. Have oh, Activision I, and do all your stuff because that's the way to that, go. Was that and, no? I'm just saying. I I think he's missing. What like, what point am I missing, Tones? Dude, you're you're saying that it's just going to be Fortnite. Fortnite, yes. like no, it's that's not Epic Games made Fortnite, but mm -hmm. there it's not going to be Disney Fortnite. It might be there might be a game that you I, can I use get that Disney, they don't develop other games. They haven't developed another game in in years besides Fortnite. They have, but you just that's haven't done heard about it, the that, game. That done 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 better than Kingdom Hearts. That's but done li better li than listen. I'm listen, listen. Oh, we're getting Def Jam up in oh, this are. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is this is why this is why I love them, because we can argue and then fucking slap. <laughs> you know, and at the end of the day, I really don't give a fuck about <laughs> about any of this either. I don't play Fortnite, so I'm yeah. never gonna know. If well, that's why he's talking. That's Fortnite. why he's saying it because he doesn't like Fortnite. But the thing, the thing you're missing, the thing you're missing is Disney wants to have its own universe, video game universe. Okay, now, so now when you say video game universe. Are, are you so outside of Fortnite? They're looking at like multiple types of game, like within yes. this one universe. Yeah, it's like like Disney games. I mean, there's not many Disney video games with the with the Disney logo on the video game. Is that? I mean, f from what my from not what anymore. I've not since like back in like yeah. the Super Nintendo. Exactly. And, now, yeah. now think of the last time they did that till now. How much billions of dollars worth of 
or how much money do you think they could have made making video See, games okay, with their and, Rogue One? And that that's my concern because again, I don't know how how many people are willing that are just going to be gamers and Disney fans that'll just go for the Disney games. I don't that's know. Mobile games were good for them. That's why they went to mobile gaming. Because it's a lot easier to have a kid on a fucking tablet and playing your little mobile Disney game. Right, that, see, that, that's true. Title. Well, yeah. Canada, that's true. But also, mobile games in general rank in money. Oh, yeah. OG, yeah. they rank in money, bro. It is insane, dude. Oh, yeah. I did, money. You, did you say money? Did you we say said money? money. <laughs> uh, that go. booty shake will never get old. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. Hey, one, one, more to- one more time for the booty. One more time for the booty. I think I missed yeah. it. I miss it. D- Damn, she almost makes it look easy, huh, George? Yeah. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little oh. carried away. Go, go ahead, guys. <laughs> you know, the one. best thing is getting to know you guys more and more over the years. It's just kind of... <laughs> there, there's, there's a big meaning behind these videos. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. No, <laughs> I, but, I respect it. <laughs> but to kind of wrap it up, what I was saying is... Epic's going to help Disney develop their kind of universe. And not only do does Disney not have to find a certain platform or they don't have to make their own platform to put their video games on because they're invested in with Epic. They could do all that. Yes. And that's fair. And put their stuff on Epic and, and to have like Fortnite, even though, you know, you don't like it and some people don't like it. It's one of the best successful games of all time. And it's not I, even. I will say that I'm very curious to see what they come up with, and I, I want them to be successful. I really do. And, and anything in Disney, I want them to be successful in in you know in their ventures of what they do. I'm just more so just curious to know like how much of a of an audience, it, not it will, an audience, but like a number of people that would be into those kind of games. It, it will be massive, George. It will be massive. Like think of it like you get Thor, for instance, Thor. You get its own video game. Like there's no Thor video game right now. Now Epic can help them develop a Thor video game to where he gets his own, you know, um, his own storyline and all that stuff. And I so it allows that, Disney to kind of widen the range of like what they can do in, in yeah, the video game industry. Of course, and and yep. they're missing out on millions of dollars. And, and once again, going to what George is saying, I don't think people are gonna buy a full Thor game. Well. I just don't see it. It's not. I, I was using Thor Batman. as an example. I'm not saying they're going to. But but you're but you're still using a Disney IP, and I do agree with you using Epic's um you know Epic's platform because that makes a lot of sense, especially because they have a yeah. lot of download free downloading every month too, which is cool. I just don't see Epic being a big player in <clears throat> helping them develop AAA games or double A game whatever they call them and be successful over multiple games. I, I just don't see they- that. Or, or, or maybe you know what you know, you know what would be cool. Uh, I don't, uh, Tones and uh, Ken, I know you guys have seen this, but OG and George, I don't know if you have. But have you guys seen the the games Cuphead? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Cuphead. You know, it'd be cool if Disney made uh like an old school Disney style Cuphead type of game, right? Because you have that that really old school like classic, you know, uh, type of Disney Disney or even like Warner Bros. animation there, right? It's very old. That'd be dope, dude. That'd be cool, like for like Oswald or something. I could see that. Yeah, yeah, dude, that'd be sick. That'd be dope. Well, gentlemen, it was fantastic talking shop with you, talking gaming, talking movies, talking uh, theme parks. Uh, gotta get, gotta get the the bad thoughts guys on more often. Always a pleasure, well, gentlemen. Oh, dude, oh, go, say one go thing. Ahead. Sorry, so guys, uh, oh, the. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just, just one thing about the games. One thing about the games. Um, Star Wars Outlaws. Have you guys seen the trailer that that just dropped the new trailer? Yeah, if you have, what do you think? Right? Is yeah, EA? is EA making that one? No, I think it's uh, Ubisoft. I oh, believe. Oh. What, 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 what who's, you who's, who's who's soft? <laughs> not, not he said you'll be he said you be soft oh okay. you be soft <laughs> you be soft, you be soft. soft. <laughs> uh T- tones did you see that one did you see that trailer uh i didn't get to see it i did uh it was all over twitter today though but 
Star Wars games in general, I mean, that's most it, of them. Say it. Say it. What are you going to say? What? what? Keep going. What are you going to say about it? I was saying, most go. of them are great. Most of Star Wars games are great. And they sell, right? Yeah. So why do I need to take my contract and not give it back to EA and give it to fucking Epic? Because do you know how bad, dude, EA just got hacked. Like millions of people <laughs> yeah, just got EA, bro. It's not a reliable. Well, it's, yeah, it's EA. Oh. <laughs> well, and, and then and then also and also too, we had the um, new Indiana Jones game, um, oh, yeah. the, a great circle with Bethesda and Machine Games coming out. And it, they can make a Tron game, dude. A Tron game with a new Tron movie coming out. Hopefully, as long as as long as Tron Three is very successful, because I think you know, you know, and that's a risk too in the video game industry. Because I know a lot of times I could be wrong. Correct me if I am, because I'm like not like uh, I'm a novice greenhorn when it comes to the the gaming industry. But they usually tie like the video game into when the movie is being released. Yeah. So it's like it's it's a hit or miss that if you then have a failed movie not saying that the game wouldn't be any bad but it kind of puts kind of a sour taste in people's mouths to say you know what this this movie failed so why the hell should i invest in into the video game and disney did that throughout almost all their all their movies and i think that's why they failed too they just try to push these random games out and they're just ass and they had those with like the adventure of mo- the avenger games every time an avenger movie came out an avenger game came out and isn't it just me i mean the same game I- I might be a stickler when it comes to it, but like when they base a video game off of a movie and when I play the game and it has absolutely nothing to do with the movie, <laughs> that pisses me off like like oh, nobody's dude, business. George, they ever since growing up, dude, right? Because I play games all my life, that's always happened, and like ninety nine point nine percent of them are fucking ass, dude. <laughs> they suck. They just do it just as a money grab. It's cheap, low quality, bad boys acting, characters glitching through things. It is awful. So, but here's the thing with Disney games, games, they need to make sure the quality of the games that they're working with need to be good. Like Lego, all the Lego. Oh, all the Lego games are phenomenal. And that's WB. Dude, fucking let WB have all this shit. Like, I remember, I I think I was actually talking to Eva about it. It's like, I, oh, I encourage him to try the Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, so that game's hard. I love that that game. (laughs) That game is super hard. Uh, Harry Potter, Lego Harry Potter, fantastic. Yes. Star Wars, Lego Star Star Wars. Too, yep. The le- even the Lego Indiana Jones. Oh. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they have a lot of the the Lego Marvels and all. I would actually play more of the Lego games than the actual <laughs> games that they made for it itself. Uh-huh. To be honest, <laughs> hey, hey Tones, um, who bakes the Harry Potter game? The one that's really hot right now, um, Hogwarts something. Hogwarts, Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's Warner Brothers. Okay, that, that I heard that's a pretty good game. Have you have you mm-hmm. tapped into that? Have you played oh, it? Or? It's yeah, it's, top it's, notch. it's a. It's a great game, dude. It is nice. It's really good. It's, it's um, probably going to win awards or won awards, one of the two. Lord of the Rings was also made by WB2, and those games are fantastic. So the, I would say that's probably one of the best movie-based games I played that follows kind of a story. Lord of the Rings, I feel like, got like such the end of the, the, the shaft of things. Like I don't even know. I, again, I'm going off a tangent here, but it's like... End of the I don't shaft, even, George? I don't, yeah, at the end of the shaft. It's just... <laughs> You know my terminology inside the gutter. Sorry, George's analogies are fucking priceless. <laughs> I've had uh, of why that Lord of the Rings. <laughs> what's, on, what's on your mind, George? Huh? Like I don't. The I don't know the, if you want to know, bro. <laughs> I don't. But I don't understand like why even the Lord of the Rings isn't in the theme park space right oh, now. Dude. Like that is like ridiculous. Why See, that's I, not going into Epic Universe? That is more Epic Universe than than. Harry. How to Train Your Dragon. I would, Just imagine I would, the scale of that fucking place. Dude, I'm telling you, Lord of the Rings would have been the perfect match for that part. Yeah, I would have done that instead of instead of How to Train Your Dragon. I, I, absolutely. Or even love- to your point, OG, instead of doing another par- partial Harry of Harry Potter, it's like you're tripling down on that shit. Use that space yeah. for something new. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly harry how to train your dad tra- how to train your dragon fuck them kids man get lord of the rings in there, you know <laughs> 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 gentlemen it is always a good time with you guys 
the Italiano, I will start. Wait, with one you. more thing. I'm, I'm fucking ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were they? What were they? Uh, George, if you can let everybody home know where they can find you on social media. <laughs> Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney <laughs> Italiano. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. There we go. Tones. If you can let everybody home know where they can find you on social media. Yes, you guys can find me at Tones underscore TV on all platforms. Oddly enough, you can find me at Tones Poppy on uh, Instagram. I forgot <laughs> I changed it. Today. But uh, no, you, Tones underscore TV on all platforms. Uh, like I said before, Kennedy Camper and I do a podcast. You guys, most of you guys have heard of uh, Bad Thoughts Podcast on YouTube and Spotify. If you guys like movies and, and TV shows, Game of Thrones um, stuff, go ahead and follow Bad Thoughts Studios on YouTube. And, um, Tones underscore TV uh, for TikTok as well. There we go. I, you know, I got to get that song on here that, hey, Poppy. You remember that song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you, oh, I'll, ha- I'll have it next time you're on, Tones. I'll have yeah, it next time you're on. Sounds good. Sounds good. And right, bl- right underneath Tones Poppy, we got Candy Camper. <laughs> <laughs> we got Candy Camper. Marcus, it was it was it was great having you back, brother. If you could let everybody at home know where they could find you on social media. Yeah, definitely appreciate it. Um, so if y'all want to send me my hate mail after this episode, that's what you're talking about. Um, you can send it to me on the Candy Camper with an extra R at the end on Instagram or on X because that's where everyone just wants to talk shit. So send it to me over on X, uh, the mm-hmm. Candy Camper. You can also find me, like Tony said, up and uh, the bad thoughts podcast and sometimes on the bad thoughts studios there we go and, and don't worry about them haters because you know to everyone who watches my life and gossips about it don't give up season two is about to come out uh, yeah there we go season two canon season two and Appreciate down below it. we got mr michael Eba. yeah oh my turn okay <laughs> <laughs> that's you you're cool. up you're, you're up to bat all right, let's go. So, yes, um, you can find me here on OG55. You can also find me on Twitter uh, at Michael Eba 1991 And you can also find me on Instagram at Eba Michael or Michael Eba, whichever one you'll see my face right on the picture. So, there we go. And I have to say, OG, it's talking about season two. I think we're on fucking season eight right now. So. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. The haters, I tell you. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Oh, OG, hold on a sec, though. <laughs> um, don't we all get special access? We do. We get special access. Yeah, you know, we all get right. we get those okay. lunches with Bob Iger and Dana Walden. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's how we that's how we do it here. That's how we do it here. Wait, so, so so essentially, we make it look easy. Oh, uh, we make it look so damn easy. <laughs> there we go. Thank you all so so much for watching this episode of O D D I.